And welcome back. And we're going to start the uh, factorial designs now with the series nine lectures. There's four of these. Uh, we'll talk about the full factorial. We'll talk about some 2K factorials, a specific 2, 3, and then we'll do a an example. We're going to start off with a real quick one here about the actual full factorial design idea. And let's get started. So 9A, the full factorials. So we've moved on from the con completely randomized design and the Latin squares that we talked about in the, in the eight series. In the nine series, we're gonna talk about the full factorials. And so we typically talk about these as the full L to the K factorials. For this class, we're gonna focus on where it fakes where most of the cases where L is equal to two, and we'll talk about what that means. And I know it's getting confusing again. We're having those K's start popping up again, so we're using the same letters over and over again. Like I said, that's the problem with the statistics alphabet. So we're just gonna use a real quick example just to kind of walk ourselves through this. This is a Kumi D, DN200 butterfly reactor containment shutoff valve, and it's a commercial nuclear reactor shutoff valve. And I'm gonna make up some data about this particular thing, but just to kind of get you an idea of what we want to do, because it does kind of provide some nice, interesting ideas. And the idea is that because we might potentially want to use this on a submarine, we don't know if we, if we want to or not, we want to minimize the acoustic operating characteristics. So it's not something that would normally be done for something trying to manufacture this because it's not normally used in marine operations. But let's, for example, we want to discover this by experimentation, what is a good acoustic operating conditions for this particular device? You know, what's going to make noise? We have design options. We can either, and we have a three design options that we can look at, and these are made up. So this is not actually Kumi's uh, data. We're just using this as kind of a, a proxy example. But then the diameter could be one of two values. It could either be a 600 millimeter or 1200 millimeter opening. Uh, the closing strength could be 1000 newtons per meter or 2000 newtons per meter. And the seal, the way that the seal is being put on there, it could be metal on metal or it could be me metal on a listometer uh, type of plastic. And so those are the options we have. And we want to see which would be the best situation and, and when we do some experimentations on what would be the best uh, design that would actually work for this. And we're going to use our just our lock ourselves into the factorial design types. We're going to come back to this. We're going to use this quite a bit as this example. So we're going to wind back again. <clears throat> so a factorial design is a design where we have treatment variables. In our case here, we're going to have two treatment variables, A and B and with a total number of levels of A and B respectively. So if I had two different treatment variables, meaning I'm looking at two different uh, dimensions, so time, pressure, temperature, nominal diameter, closing spring, seal method, those are all treatments. Uh, in a case like this one, we would have two different treatment variables and they would have a certain number of levels. So just like the categorical variables we talked about, how many different ones would they have? Our harvesters that we had would have example had six, our operating teams had five. So we typically call that by the A times B factorial design. The levels of both variables are selected in a random order. In general, if you had more than two variables, instead of having capital A and capital B, you might have capital A, capital B, capital C, and so on and so on and so on. And you just typically call it the level of fact, the levels times the levels times levels factorial design. Uh, so for example, you might have a two by two by three type exam. So this would have three treatment variables, A, B, and C, and then A would have two levels, B would have two levels, C would have three levels, right? That could be a two by two by three type design. We don't typically get into those weird ones like that for our class, but that is potentially out there. If you do the same number of replicates, in each cell, then we call that design balanced. So we're going to do every single replicate, meaning we're going to do the same experiment over and over again. You know, if we do it the same number of times for each possible design, so if I do every design three times, I do every design four times, I do every design five times, that's balanced. If I do only one design twice and another design four times, another design three times, that's an unbalanced one. If I do all possible combinations, and we'll find out why we may not want to do all combinations when we get to the, the fractionals, but if I do all the possible combinations, I do I do what's called a full design, right? So I got the balanced and I have a concept of full. And what I'm basically building here is typically talking about a balanced and full factorial design. That's a, that's a BFF. And so that's what we're going to do. So for our A times B factorial design, we have K treatment variables. So we might have, you know, for example, in our little example that we had before we have you know our three treatment variables meaning we had our diameter our spring constant and we had our seal 
right, those are three, that's K. When we have K choose one main effects, we have K choose two two-way interactions, we have K choose three three-way interactions where those variables might work with work uh, uh, in interaction with each other. Then we have our degrees of freedom, so our class of degrees of freedom, we have all of our options times the number of replicates. Minus one, which again, remember this is this degrees of freedom total plus one is equal to the number of data points we collect. And that's been pretty common for our whole process. Our error is the same way. Our model with full interactions is going to be the same thing. We'll see how that actually plays out a little bit later. This is general terms. And so when we get to the other lectures, we'll actually talk about the different kinds that we can actually have of these. But in most of our cases, again, we're going to deal with the situation where there's only two levels for each one. And we're just going to add on more and more type of designs. Right. And so we'll see that when we get to the next lecture. So this is really just a quick introduction to some of the terminologies we're going to see in the future lectures. So this should be a pretty quick lecture. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.